When a new prospect comes to the bank, a teller enters the inquiry as a new lead into the system by fulfilling some main uh, contact data about the customer in first place, such as, uh, for example, first name, last name, then, uh, for example, mobile phone and email address. And this is enough to save the lead. If there is already a, uh, a lead or containing the similar contact data, the system will recognize it and uh, offer a user with a potential duplicate found. The user then can choose to uh, review or actually to compare these leads and then decide if he will uh, merge it or he will uh, continue processing them independently. So let's uh, compare these two leads. What I can see here is that um, these fields are actually different on the lead I already had previously in the system. But if I uh, uncheck this box here, I will see exactly all the data uh, that uh, reside on both leads. So as you can see here, for example, contact data is completely the same, first name, last name, as well as mobile phone and uh, email. So let's actually then uh, decide that this lead is definitely a duplicate. So we will uh, select to, uh, let's say, uh, continue the process on the lead that already has in the system. So let's check OK. And now what we have in the system is only uh, one lead where we will uh, proceed our process. What is already fulfilled on this lead is that uh, the product customer is interested in is a cash loan and the source of this lead is a web, bearing in mind that actually this lead was synced from the web form. Uh, on the lead, we not only collect uh, customers' uh, contact and address data, but also we can use this opportunity to ask our customer if he would like to give us the consent for direct marketing and in that way uh, be uh, targeted through the uh, through the campaigns upon uh, his or her channel preferences. So let's say that our customer would like to receive uh, campaigns through email uh, and SMS. Okay, so uh, let's wait one second until everything is saved. And now we are good to proceed with the process further. So as you can see here, the next process is KYC stage, uh, where uh, a user needs to enter all data mandatory uh, for registration of a customer into core banking system. To speed up this uh, process and uh, reduce manual work, there is one option here uh, that actually can be used to read customer's data from his ID card. And this is exactly what I will do. So let's read uh, Anna's data from her ID card. And as you can see here, uh, we are uh, now transferred to the application form, uh, which contains all the data uh, that could be found on Anna's uh, ID card. So besides first and last name, we also see that she's a resident, then her personal number, uh, document identification uh, uh, type document, the number, uh, what is the validity period for the document, uh, as well as um, Anna's address data, uh, data uh, regarding her uh, birth, uh, uh, city, country, etc. So let's save this. Uh, and uh, besides this data that we can um, read from ID card, uh, there is also additional mandatory data which a user can enter manually, manually, such as data regarding segmentation. So let's say that Anna is actually uh, belongs to retail segment. The sub-segment can be that she is actually employed. And also we can put it at... Uh, Employment type, for example, is full-time job. Uh, position is product manager. And income type is salary. 
Also, what we can see here is ML verification date that was actually uh, performed uh, during the um, uh, during the application form uh, creation, uh, and uh, we see that she is currently not black or or gray listed. So besides this uh, basic uh, contact data, address data, uh, document type data, employment data, also what can be entered additionally is uh, FATCA data, risk data, additional ML data, uh, as well as these GDPR constants uh, can be uh, additionally edited here, even though they are already mapped from uh, what we uh, entered previously uh, on the lead left. Okay, let's say that actually we now do have all data that are mandatory for registration and let's perform it. So here in the ribbon, there is one button sent to core, which will ensure that uh, all these data gathered so far uh, is transferred to the core system. So let's perform this operation. It will take a while. Okay, so we are informed that uh, the operation has been successfully uh, executed. And if we uh, see actually now what, uh, what happened uh, inside the system, we will see that application form is in status processed. And we will also notice that customer record is created. So now if I navigate to this customer, Anna Tomic, I will see all these data collected and entered on the application form mapped to the customer record or contact record. So of course now we are transferred to the 360 of this customer. So we see here general info, then in profile summary we will see more regarding uh, personal data entered, Previously, identification data, employment data, uh, contact information, address data, uh, and so on. In the marketing, for example, we will see data regarding segmentation. Uh, and, uh, of course, if we go to KYC document, we will see uh, the list, first of all, the list of all, all application forms that were uh, created and used to manage data for this customer. Bear in mind, this is very new customer. We have only this one application form uh, we use to register the customer, but in a minute we will see uh, how actually we can then change uh, some of the data uh, that we already registered. So besides this uh, application form, we also see when was the last KYC done for, for this customer and when next KYC should be done in order to ensure that the customer data is always up to date in our system. Okay, so now let's assume that uh, Anna's address has been changed. Uh, she comes to the, uh, to the bank and informs um, the teller uh, about this change. So he needs to record this in both uh, CRM and uh, core banking system. So as you can notice here, uh, all of this data that we entered previously on application form uh, is locked. So all these fields are locked. And why is that? Because the change or, or any modification on the, the, of the customer's data can be done only through the controlled process uh, we, can, we have seen. And now when uh, some of this data has to be changed, we actually repeat the process. So we can, for example, navigate here to KYC uh, stage or actually tab and decides to create a new application form where we will enter all the changes. So let's do it. From here, we can press new application form. And of course, now we are presented uh, with all Anna's data we have in the system. Of course, they are here editable. So let's say that her address is changed. So she's not a resident of, for example, um, uh, Nemanina anymore, uh, but it is uh, actually, uh, for example, this address. And municipality is also different. Okay. 
Okay, we can save this change and quite similarly to what we did before, we only need to send this to the core system and uh, ensure uh, address is up to date there as well as in CRM. Okay. So again, application form is processed. And if we now navigate to uh, Anna, Anna's 360 and to the profile summary where uh, actually the address data can be found, we will see that address is exactly what we entered on the last application form. And not only that, but now in KYC tab, we will see both uh, application forms uh, created for Anna. We also have the link to the uh, latest one and also uh, the uh, KYC last date applies, last KYC has also been changed. So this is actually how uh, the how the data uh, is managed. So how we register a customer uh, from the lead, we go to the application form, enter all mandatory data, we register the customer. Uh, this results in a contact record being created and containing all necessary data. Uh, and then if any of this data needs to be changed, we repeat the process by creating an application form that already contains all the data from contact record, we do the changes, we sync them to core banking system, and not only there, but also on customer 360 view. Uh, okay, and now uh, also what is very important when it comes to customer data is that we do have uh, all consents uh, to keep this uh, sensitive data in the system. Or in other words, that we are compliant with uh, GDPR regulation. Uh, that said, uh, on Customer 360 view, one of the tabs that can be found is GDPR. And there we have the overview of all the consents uh, gathered or withdrawn uh, during the customer's uh, li life cycle in, in our system. So. Let's now uh, go through through each of these and try to try to clarify uh, what we see here. So, first of all, what we see here and what we already uh, saw before, even on lead and application form level, uh, are marketing constant channels. So these are channels that are, uh, let's say, from CRM perspective, the most important. Bearing in mind that. Uh, uh, very often uh, different campaigns are launched uh, from CRM and then we need to know if uh, we uh, may or may not include a particular customer into the campaign. And not only that, but also we need to uh, follow customer preferences when it comes to uh, channels uh, uh, he, would, he or she would like to receive uh, a campaign through. So during the uh, customer uh, registration, uh, actually while, while the customer was a prospect only, uh, we recorded that the customer is interested in receiving email campaigns, uh, email campaigns as well as SMS campaigns. This type of data can be also uh, additionally managed from here. So in case we talk with our customer or collect uh, and collect the consent for uh, other channel, or maybe he calls us and uh, decides to withdraw a consent through, for example, from through, for example, SMS. This is something that we can definitely uh, maintain here. So let's say that he doesn't want, or actually she doesn't want to receive campaigns through SMS anymore, but for example, she would like to receive them uh, through Viber. And uh, this is what I showed is, of course, manual intervention, but also these consents can be uh, managed automatically. For example, in case there is an uh, unsubscription option in the email or Viber or SMS message and the customer uh, basically opts out uh, uh, from, from certain channel, uh, this would be integrated and, of course, uh, set here. Then, if we go uh, a bit up, we will see other three constants that are uh, very important. 
Constants uh, a bank has based based on active contracts contracts uh, existing with a customer, then a legal um, a consent uh, saying that there is an active uh, process, uh, for example, sales process with the customer, and a, a legit interest. Um, Excuse me, I actually missed legal and legit interest. So legal uh, saying that there is a ground because uh, retention period of a contract or any other uh, or any other uh, contract for, for for example for any product uh, uh, the customer has had in the system has not expired yet, and then legit interest uh, that is actually. Um, uh, indicates that there is an active process with the customer, maybe an active opportunity or something else, even though the the contract uh, itself maybe has not been uh, realized yet. Uh, these three uh, um, basically depend heavily on the data that uh, exists in um, a core system, and this is why uh, these are these are locked here and uh, can be set only. Uh, by the system, so either by reading them from some ex external source or by implementing uh, some rules uh, within the, the Dynamics 365, which will then know uh, if these should be set to, uh, to yes or to no. Uh, regardless how the constants are managed manually or automatically, and regardless their, their type, uh, any change of for any constant value is always recorded and that log is exactly uh, what is shown here and, and what uh, what actually we call constant register. So when I actually change his for uh, this one, for example, Viber uh, to back to no, a log will be created showing exactly uh, which constant uh, which constant type was changed to which value in this case even for which uh, channel when and of course by whom and in this way we ensure that uh, basically there is always uh, visible evidence uh, showing uh, how the particular constant uh, is uh, set uh, within the system And now let's see actually what happens when there are no constants anymore, meaning a number of years um, passes. Uh, Anna is, for example, not an active customer anymore, so there is no any active uh, contract with her. Uh, she's not interested in uh, taking any new products, uh, not even um, uh, constants for direct marketing uh, are present. So. To simulate this, I will basically set all the constants to no. So for marketing constants, this is very really easy. I can do it right here. So I just withdraw the constants uh, for all the channels and naturally direct marketing is then uh, set to withdrawn. And for the others, I will simulate uh, this by uh, calling uh, an, uh, an operation that actually will uh, result in having set all these three to no. So let's wait a couple of seconds and check if now the constants are withdrawn or not. Yeah, now we see that all of them are withdrawn. And not only that, but we will see in the status of this uh, for this contact that status is updated to pending anonymization. Why is that? Well, simply because if there is no legal ground to keep customer sensitive data within the system, the bank is obliged to anonymize the customer by deleting all sensitive data or data that somebody could use to identify the customer from the system. So let's go now a bit down and you will see that uh, there is one new case that uh, has been uh, created and having uh, the name anonymization request for Anatomic. If I navigate to this case, which is normally assigned to compliance department, 
we will be on a case form uh, where uh, now we should uh, go through the process and uh, ensure that the, uh, the customer is properly anonymized. What will help us to do a proper anonymization is as any other case type, guided business process flow, as well as SLA ensuring that we are doing particular actions in time. So let's turn on the process uh, that actually is uh, applicable for anonymization process. So here, this is anonymization. And of course, then we will pre be presented with several stages and steps a user needs to go through in order to anonymize the customer properly. So of course, in anonymization identification, uh, some basic data should be set, such as um, what is the reason for anonymization, uh, if the customer is already informed, we will anonymize his data from the system. Then in data collection, we actually um, uh, check, uh, going go through the list and uh, we need to confirm that all of these are done because these are basically preconditions for the anonymization. And then in last uh, stage, there is an operation that we will um, trigger in order to anonymize the customer properly. So let's hit this button and see exactly uh, what will uh, happen. So sorry, I just remember that I haven't uh, ticked this here, so I would be able to perform anonymization. Okay, now when this is set, let's then hit the button. Let's confirm the anonymization and uh, let's start it. Okay, we see that it has been completed successfully. Let's just refresh the page. And first thing that you will notice is that on a customer link, there is no anatomic anymore, but it says no name. Why is that? Well, because first name and last name are definitely sensitive data and therefore uh, they needed to be removed. So if I navigate to Anna Stomich Customer 360 now, I will see first of all that uh, the record has been closed with the status anonymized. And of course, I will see all these um, uh, personal or sensitive data missing, such as first name, last name, personal number, then in profile summary, uh, contact information is missing, but for example, address information uh, is still there. Is address something that is uh, sensitive? Somebody would consider it yes, somebody would consider it no. Uh, so for, for this type of, um, let's say, doubts uh, and some rules that definitely depend from um, industry to industry or, or bank to bank, there is one, um, settings uh, within uh, the system that can be easily set to ensure uh, and ensure uh, that uh, uh, sensitive data uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, that, that fields the particular bank uh, considers uh, sensitive are deleted. So I will nav now navigate to this one. So in settings, there is uh, this, sorry, GDPR settings. And here, based on, on uh, basically on an entity level, we can define which data is sensitive and which isn't. So first of all, let's go to contact, since this is what uh, uh, we, we were working on. And here in sensitive attributes, we will see the list. So the list that is dynamically created and that contains all the attributes, custom and out of the box that exist on contact entity. And we exactly see which are those that uh, were considered to be sensitive in the operation we just uh, triggered triggered uh, a few moments ago. And uh, for example, let's see, we see that address data, nothing is selected as sensitive. But if you would like to change that for uh, any other uh, future anonymization, this is not an issue at all. So we just need to uh, for example, select this data here and 
in the next uh, anonymizations, this will be also uh, removed uh, from the system. Just ensure that I save it. Yes. Uh, so uh, this would be uh, it regarding uh, a customer journey. So we saw how one journey looks from the very beginning while the customer is still prospect and then to the very end uh, where actually uh, we are obliged to anonymize his data, his or her data uh, by removing uh, any data considered to be sensitive. And what we consider to be sensitive can be can be really easily uh, set inside uh, GDPR settings. Thank you for your attention.